I'm still in my PJs, and it's almost noon. It's like 11.30 in the morning. But whatever, it's summer, and so I reserve the right to be lazy. I was also, uh, my goal this morning was to clean my room, because it's really messy. Look, see? It's a room, very messy room. It's really just like clothes and books everywhere. Have, there are just like seven random stacks of books all over the place. There's one here, there's like four over there on my wardrobe and on the floor, and they're just, I need to find places for them on my bookshelves so that I don't trip over any more stacks of books, because that's actually really painful. In case you've never done it before, I don't recommend it. But um, anyway, I'm actually just going to be lazy. And instead of cleaning my room right now, like I'm supposed to be doing, I'm going to do a quick book review for this book, Instructions for a Broken Heart by Kim Colbertson. Colbertson? Colbertson? I don't know. Anyway, um, this book was recommended to me by a friend because the main character reminded her of me. I think this is mostly because she's into theater and she's also kind of a nerd, but seriously, she is much more of an overachiever than me. Also, she's wearing orange on the cover, and orange is one of my favorite colors to wear. That's probably not why she thought this character reminded her of me at all, but that's my interpretation. Hi Kristen, you're probably watching this video and you're just like, Megan, what are you doing? I don't know. In case you didn't notice, I'm in a really weird mood today. So this is bound to be a really interesting review, right? Yeah. It's actually been a while since I read the book, and I read it in a day, so if I get any of the facts wrong, I'm sorry about that. But basically, this book is about a girl. <laughs> and uh, she catches her boyfriend cheating on her, but then directly after that, all three of them and the rest of their drama club are going on this trip to Italy, and she decides to continue going on the trip even though she's basically forced to then watch her boyfriend make out with the girl that he cheated on her with, and she's single and lonely in Italy. But while on the trip, her best friend, Carissa, who is back in the States, she left her uh, 20 envelopes, I think, with each one with a reason why her ex-boyfriend is a jerk face loser, and one instruction for something un like to do, Jessa being the main character. I didn't mention that. She also has the help and support of her friend Tyler, who is enforcing all of the rules and instructions and things that their friend Carissa left for Jessa. So basically, she's in Italy dealing with a broken heart with all of these really crazy instructions left for her by her friend. And she's um, she does get her happily ever after in a way. One thing that I did like about this book a lot is that it's actually pretty realistic. And even though like her boyfriend cheated on her and that sort of thing, it goes into how... You know, he was to blame, but she was also to blame, so it's not like there's this black and white, this is the bad guy, this is the good guy sort of mentality. And each of the characters is very, um, very real, very well developed uh, by the end of the book. And I don't want to give too much away, but one thing about the book is that not unexpectedly, it tends to get very angsty. Kristen, I hope you do not think that I am as angsty as the character in this book because I really thought that I was, I was just, I, it was very angsty in some points and I was just like, okay, honey, get over it. But that's because that's how I am and that's not how every girl is and I've never had to deal with a broken heart so maybe I'm just being heartless for lack of a better word. Um, if you read the summary on the back of this book, it's really misleading so don't. I mean, it's just... <laughs> I was reading this and, um... It doesn't make any sense, really, and it doesn't really... <laughs> it's very misleading, because that's not how the story ends. Also, on the front of this book, it has a review by Jennifer Eccles author of Forget You and Endless Summer, and it says, Fans of Sarah Jessen shouldn't miss this romantic and richly layered tour. And I don't know that I agree with that. I've only read a few Sarah Jessen books, and I can see how somebody might think that they're very similar, but there is a very um, Sarah Jessen characteristic that is missing from this book, and I can't put my finger on what it is, but 
I mean, don't expect this book to be exactly the same. It's a good book. It's, um, I don't think it's quite as well developed as a lot of Sarah Dessen books. And I, I'm not sure that the characters are as complex. So keep that in mind. Uh, that all said, it was, it was a pretty good book. Um, it's not the type of book that I generally read all the time, but I appreciate all sorts of books. So, and, uh, I, like I said, I read it in a day. It was a quick read, and I actually couldn't think of it. I was still in Vicodin at that point in time, so maybe I'm not the best judge of that book. Maybe I should reread it or something. But And not to mention, I was entirely jealous the entire way through because the main character was Nidalee, and I was not. So that probably hindered my judgment, too. But no, it was, it was a pretty good book. It was um, realistic. There were some good characters. It was really witty. It's very funny the way that it's written when she's not moping too much. I liked the idea behind it. I liked the idea of the witty, snarky friend with her instructions and envelopes and all of the reasons of why he was a jerk face. Work. They were funny. So, um, yeah, give it a try. Happy reading. I was like a double wave. Usually I just do one. <laughs>